Sometimes browser automation and something like Playwright is all you need to scrape data that you're after. And in this video, I'm gonna do just that. I'm just gonna use Playwright on its own, nothing else, and we're gonna scrape the data from this site. There's something like 700 and something items in this category, but this would work across any of these categories in this sales section. But before we write any code, the first thing that I always do is have a look at the site so I can know what's going on. So I wanna show you a few things first. Now, um, this is a pag paginated um, website here, and you can see that we have these buttons that we go to the next page. Um, but if we check out the product page first, we'll show you that we don't need to do a lot of parsing and that's why I'm happy to use Playwright in its entirety for this. I don't particularly like using Playwright or Selenium when I have to do a load of parsing. Now, when you're on a dedicated product page like this, always come to view page source and then do search for the word schema and see what you can find. Now, I did a video on this uh, on my channel a little bit earlier, but this here is all valid JSON and we can access it from this script tag and grab it out here. So if I copy this and we go to JSON parser online, paste this in, I copied the whole thing rather like this, paste it in, it's valid JSON and you can see that this is all of the information we could ever want from this product is basically the schema which is uh, standard. So this is very, very good for us to have. So I'm going to close that. And that's how we're going to get the product information from each of the detail pages. So what we want to do is we want to loop through all of the product pages per page, and then go to the next page and do the same and then go to the next page and do the same. As I said, we're going to do that in playwright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a virtual environment first Python three, dash M V and V B E M V and then we'll pip install what we need once we've activated that and I'm going to install playwright and I'm also going to install rich just makes it easier when I print stuff to my terminal when I'm running it so you guys can see you don't need that here then you want to do playwright install I'm going to do playwright install chromium only because I don't need the other ones it gives me this error but I've already installed it so I know it works it's fine in that case of course I'm going to create a new file I'm going to call this main.py and I'm going to open this up in my code editor I'm using helix um, I'm really enjoying helix at the moment I've pretty much moved from NeoVim to it uh, whatever code editor is fine so let's start by importing what we need so we'll do from playwright dot sync api we're going to import in the sync playwright and also the playwright module itself and then from rich import print and we will import in anything else we need as we go so it's very simple to run playwright just on its own i'm going to keep this as straightforward as possible so we're going to stick with the default of the run function and this takes in an instance of playwright which i'm going to use for these type hints here and then pass and then we have our with sync playwright as playwright we're just going to run it down here so this is going to run our code for us so we're going to put everything in this run function as i said because we don't have to do loads of parsing it's not going to be that difficult there's not going to be too many lines of code we'll end up with like 50 or 60 lines of code so it's all good in that respect Right, so let's get this a uh, little bit started first. So we're going to say that our, uh, we'll have a start URL and I'll grab that in just a second. Then we'll have our uh, Chrome, which is going to be equal to playwright.chromium. Then our browser, which is going to be equal to chrome.launch. And then our new page, which is going to be equal to browser.page, new page like so. This is going to basically launch Playwright for us create the browser context, create a new page for us, etc, etc. Then we're going to do page dot go to uh, our start URL like this. So I'm going to save this I'm going to come over to my other terminal and I'm going to activate my virtual environment here. And we'll just do Python main.py and we should cannot navigate to an invalid URL. Of course you can't I didn't put the URL in there. That would help. So let's put you in there. Save now. <laughs> let's uh, run it again. Okay, cool. So it did nothing, but it didn't didn't not it did nothing, but it didn't not work. We are going to need to, to use uh, headless is equal to false here. And that is because when we run it uh, completely headless, there's a giveaway unless you remove that There's a giveaway that the website knows what's going on. So it doesn't work. 
So we're gonna do this, we're gonna see the browser open here and load this page up and then disappear. So I'm happy, I know that that's all working. So let's construct the main part of our code that is going to go to every product page and return that data for us. Now I'm gonna put this in a while uh, true. Now this is just a continuous loop that I'm gonna use and I'm gonna break out of it on a condition. Um, it's up to you, however you wanna loop through, however it works for you, that's fine. But we need to grab the links now for the page, for each of the product pages on the main page. So I'm gonna go to the inspect tool, I'm gonna to grab the selector for this, and here it is over here. This uh, thing here with the data dash selenium thing. So to do that, we're gonna do for link in page dot locator. Now the locator is going to allow us to use CSS selectors to actually grab the element. So I'm gonna say A, and I was data dash selenium, which equaled this thing here. And we wanna do dot all, and this returns an iterator with all of the links, um, a bit like find all if, you used to, if you're used to beautiful soup or something like that. What we wanna do now is we don't wanna use the original page. We don't wanna use this to go to that. Whilst that is a valid approach, I'm gonna create a new page every time and open it up so I don't have to go back and forth between loading up the different pages. I can just load up the, the uh, list page, all the product pages separately, and then the next page from the list page. So to do that, we do p is equal to uh, browser.newPage like so, and because we're not clicking, we're going to, we wanna create a base URL for this. Uh, I'm just gonna grab that, which is this here, and I'll show you that in just a second. So that's a base URL, and the reason why we do that is because just over here above my head, you'll see that the href is not a complete link. It's not a full absolute URL, so we need to put the base bit in front of it so when we open it, we can go to this page here. So now we wanna do our URL is gonna be equal to link dot uh, attribute get attribute href like so this is the attribute the actual link bit which is going to get added onto the base url here so now we want to do p dot go to the url like so now you'll notice it's saying on my error here that we can't be it's a, a string or a none and that's because this attribute may or may not exist so what we're going to do is if url is not none p dot go to the URL uh, else p dot close and then basically that just handles that error there just in case if this doesn't exist it doesn't try and go to it because it doesn't exist and it just closes that browser context there cool so let's uh, save and come back over here and let's run this now we should open up a page and then open up the next one the next one the next one cool so these are all the product pages that are opening up we do have an issue here is that they are not closed because so they are going to hang around forever and cause us untold misery so we will want to do now is whilst we're in our loop here p.close cool so let's do this again and we should now open up a page close it open up the next one close it like so. So you can see that we're going through all of the product pages here, which hold the information that we're actually wanting to scrape. Now there's about 28 or something per page, so that's going to do this 28-ish times. Um, all in all, it's not going to be the quickest thing in the world, but it's not going to be that bad. You could easily set this to run. I reckon the whole thing would probably take about an hour, if that, which is not that big a deal. So now that we're loading the product, the detail page up, we want to take the uh, the schema data, which I showed you from here, we wanna grab this, wherever it's gone, we wanna grab this here. So this is the a script tag with the application LD plus JSON. Whenever you see this, it's likely to have this information in here. So we can do the same thing again. We can do data is equal to p.locator, and it was a script, and it's a LD, and it was a type, 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 is equal to, uh, did I copy it? Application LD plus JSON. From this, we want the text content like so. So now I'm going to print out the data like this, and we'll run a few, and we'll see that we should get that information spat out to our terminal. It's going to be a bit difficult to see, but you can basically see it coming across here now. And that is exactly all the information that we want. I'm going to stop this. We don't need it to run. So we, this is all the data there. So what I'm gonna do is we'll just clear this screen up and we'll come back to our code here. I've somehow ended up with an extra terminal that I don't 
need. Great. So now we've got this data, what we're going to do is we're going to make it into JSON. So we'll do import JSON and we'll come down here and we'll do our JSON data is equal to json.loads, load a string, data like so. And then we'll just print out our JSON data like this. And we'll check that that still works. And now instead of that string type, we're going to get an actual set of JSON. And you can see it's formatted ever so slightly on the left hand side of my screen. And that's because Rich knows that now it's not a string, it's actual JSON. So it's it doing all the indenting for us. So that's good. And I think we should be able to ask for just the name now. There we go. So I've just uh, I'm asking just asking for the name key, uh, just to make it a bit easier so we can see what's going on. Right, so that's great. That works. Clear that up. So this is essentially the crux of it. So all we've got to do now is we've got to sort out the pagination. So whilst I'm in this, that's why I set up this while true loop. So I'm going to go through all of the links on the page. And then underneath here, I'm going to go to the next page from the main page for the pagination. So if we come over here, let's make this a little bit smaller, scroll to the bottom, and it's here. Here's the next page link. And we can see that it is here. I've lost it now. One second. This listing paging next. Now at the end of this, and I know I think there's 28 pages. Let me try that 28. At the end of this, you'll see that it's grayed out. However, it still has the full class thing here, which is why I've done this as a while loop. So we can break out and we can choose how we want to do that. So let's go ahead and do page dot locator. So we want to find this, there was an a tag. Like so it is equal to listing page dot next. And we can do dot click like this. And this is going to then click on that link on every page. What I'm going to do just so we don't have to wait for it for every single one to check the pagination is I'm going to index just one of the products. So this will be the first for every like grid of products on the page. So we're not going to get the full data, but it means we can test out the pagination without waiting all that time. So let's run now. So we're going to see less uh, products come by, but we should hopefully see this page here go to the next page. There we go. You can see we're now we're getting different products. So I'm going to let this run and we're going to see what happens to we when we get to the end and what page number I think is something like 28 or 20, 29. So let's see what happens when we get back there. So we're just going round and round and round in circles now, because we have nothing to break out of this loop. And it's just loading up that's swapping over because I'm moving my mouse around. It's just loading up this page over and over and over again until I stop it. So we need to now break out of our while true loop. Now if we weren't in our while true, we would have to do something like figure out the number of pages because we can't use a stop here or something like that. But what I decided to do was to use this here. Now if you look at this piece of text, it will come and open it up here. It's a text string. And we have seven, seven, uh, 757 to 776 of 776. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this string, I'm going to split it up. And I'm going to compare these two numbers. And if they're equal, that's how I'm going to break out of my loop. Now there's obviously a few different ways you could do this. This is just the way that I chose. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. So what we're going to do is we'll say our page numbers is equal to uh, we in P page, uh, page dot locator. And it was a span like so dot text content like this. And we need to do a split on this because this is a string. So I'm going to split it first on a dash. So we'll do dot split like so. Now when we split it on a dash, let me actually um, copy this so we can show you. So if I open up uh, Python three, like this, let's make this nice and big. So if we say that our string is equal to this, if we do string dot split on the dash like this, we're going to end up with a list like this. So what we want to do is we want to then ask for the first index. And then from that, we want to split on a space. And then we have this. And then we want to we can actually reference the first one, which is 776. So if I make this an integer, like so, 
we have 776. And then we want to compare it to the second index, which is turning that into an integer. So we then ignore the of and we have our comparison, which we can then do on those two numbers. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do dot split here, then um, the first index, and then dot split on a space. That's our page numbers. Okay, and then we can do if int on page numbers zero is equal to an integer of page numbers two. That means we're on the last page. So let's just do print no more pages and break. So we're going to break out out of this while loop. So I'm within the while loop here. I'm not within this for loop. This is for the detail page. Let's put a comment in here. Detail pages. Well, that's not very nice formatting on this. Let's not do that. For the, that's not very nice formatting there. So now we will break out of this. So I'm going to do else, and I'm going to put this in an else. So it only happens if it doesn't find that page dot locator like so. And then finally, we want to have browser.close like so. That should be within our run statement. So when it's finally done, the browser closes and we are all happy in our own way. And that is it essentially. So this is what did, I, what did we get to 43 lines of playwright code. And that's going to work and go through all of those pages. Let's run this again. I think I'm still just getting the first one. I am. So we'll just check that this works. In fact, what we're going to do to still work on the first page. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll change the start URL to page 27. And we'll check that this works when it goes to 28. And it's the end, no more pages. Perfect. So we found we found a way to consistently break out using that page number selector at the end, depending on what site you're, you're looking at, you may need to uh, figure something out a little bit different. But this worked for me in that case, let's we've reset everything. So we're going to show all the pages. So let's uh, save and run it again. And we'll just see all the see it working one more time. And it'll load up each one and it'll go through and you'll see we're getting the information on the right hand side. Now the only thing left to do would be to save this but we're basically ending up here with a nice formatted JSON piece of JSON data. So I would suggest from there, most likely thing to do would just be to export it to a JSON or a JSON lines file, and then handle it outside of the script that way. Um, I find that's a much better option than trying to do anything with it whilst you're actually working with it and getting it out here. Um, and as we're going through page by page, you can also append. So if it stops partway through for whatever reason, you can carry on and not lose everything that you've done so far. So that's it. That was nice and easy uh, for playwright nice and easy mode didn't take us too long to do 40 40 something lines of code 43 lines of code no big deal so nice and easy there's a few cool things in here um, one last thing that I want to show you which um, is useful in a way is we want to put in um, <clears throat> is that in between here we can do page dot root and we can actually block images as well I just need to remember how to do this it's like this so we're blocking dot and we'll have png jpeg and jpeg like this and then we pass this into a lambda anonymous function and we do root root dot abort like so and if we copy this line and we put it down here as well i think we want it here and make this p like this now when we come back over here, we should have no images, which means, you know, if you're using proxies, saves you a little bit of data, marginally quicker, because we don't have to wait for it to load up the images if, it, if it's an image heavy site, which most modern sites are. So that's a nice tip to make things a little bit quicker, and a little bit easier just by blocking the images. This will work for any other types of files as well. So if you've got websites loading up something else that's really kind of heavy that you don't need, you can add it into here and it will also block that there. So that's it for this one. Hope you've enjoyed it got something out of it. Make sure you like comment, subscribe, all that cool stuff it really does help me out join the discord there's loads of cool people stuck in there now loads of cool stuff going on and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching and i will see you again in the next one